Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? That's a really cool room. Thanks! Uh, I did it myself. Um, it's your house? It's called hoarding, and I do oh. it well. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna dive right in uh, with some of these yeah. questions. And uh, sure. how have you been able, uh, and have you been able to work with people that share your vision as well as your background? Yeah, uh, I feel so like lucky that I've been able to collaborate with a lot of um, people who do have that similar kind of background as me, because that just helped inform the movie and just made it the best possible, you know, movie it could be. I'm um, partnering again with Rona Liu, who is the amazing production designer for Turning Red, but she was also the PD for uh, Bao as well. And um, she's not Canadian, but she's Chinese American. And uh, she had a really close relationship with her mom when they first immigrated to America. And she was always like, we have a lot of similarities in our background. Uh, and then also I was lucky enough to collaborate with Julia Cho, who is our screenwriter uh, on the film. And uh, she is Korean American, but you know, she's she also has that that same kind of relationship with her mom. She's a little bit older than me, but like we were still able to bond a lot and be able to figure out the relationship between Maylin and, and her mother in the movie. And I'm really grateful to have been able to partner with a writer who had personal experience with that. I love hearing that, yeah, like not just from your point of view, the director's point of view, there's a writer's point of view, the artist's point of view. It it all yeah. seems to be coming from a very authentic place. And I feel like, you know, we're definitely striving to have more diversity on screen, but I feel like, and I'm sure you, you would agree, uh, that it is just as important to have that authenticity behind the Cintiq and behind the pen or behind the paintbrush. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, otherwise it's just virtue signaling, right? Like I feel like uh, that that um, push for diversity should come from the root of all projects and all, you know, like all of these like films and TV shows. Uh, and there should be an like a, a, a want and an encouragement to involve people of that community into the creative process. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, to add to that, like we have seen an increase in diverse stories being told, in particular oh. those of East Asian descent and East Asian stories. Do you feel like uh, these have been very uh, popular and uh, successful in a way? Um, like yeah. how, how like, you know, something like Shang-Chi, for instance, was so specific to, to the background, yet it's a superhero movie, so it's kind of like being told to a more wide audience. Um, how, how do you feel about these stories, and do you think that they're, they were, they were uh, successful? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, um, it, I think it's just a reflection of how much smaller our world feels. Uh, because of the internet, because of access to, you know, information and people and music and culture from all over the world. Like, I remember when I was growing up in Toronto, the only way I could watch anime or listen to, like, J-pop or C-pop or whatever was either, like, take take my chances trying to download it from the internet and get a virus or I would go to Pacific Mall and like buy like a bootleg DVD of, of it. And it was very hard to like come by that stuff. But now it's like so uh, easy. Yeah. And, and you see like, you know, Asian culture has kind of become the mainstream. Like you see BTS, you see anime, like like that's, that's mainstream now. It's not, it's no longer a uh, niche or just for, you know, Nerd, nerds like myself <laughs> growing up and you're yeah, not just, you're not alone you're not alone yeah, uh. <laughs> I think it's super cool and and I also just think like the world is always constantly changing and people get bored of the same thing over and over again like the same kinds of stories with the same kinds of characters so I feel like there is this natural need and want to see 
new kinds of characters and to see new kinds of stories that haven't been tapped into from people who haven't had the opportunity to. So this is, in your point of view then, this is definitely not a temporary like moment for people of color. Um, no, we're, we're, no. We're, we're not like a flavor of the month. We're not gonna be switched up for another culture. You think <laughs> that this is gonna continue, yeah? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I definitely think it will continue. It's just, yeah, like it's, like I said before, the world is just becoming smaller and um, we're just, like mainstream culture is just becoming more global and multicultural and yeah. I feel yeah, like, I, you know, with what's going on in the world right now, we're all kind of like under that microscope and under, you know, with what, what with social media and, and the news and stuff, you yeah. know, always kind of like pinpointing things that are happening in the world and how it affects the rest of us. How do you feel like uh, representation can succeed and persist uh, and not fade with like the limelight of the news? Yeah, uh, I just think we should keep supporting uh, our people telling their stories through movies, through TV shows. That's the only way to, to do it, is just to show that there is an interest and the hunger for those types of stories. I mean, like Squid Game, for instance, that was like a huge surprise, right? For for Netflix being like one of the most watched things ever, like over yeah. Stranger Things, like that. Yeah, I think we're like, there's a, a, a different definition for like what is a universal story. Cause like a universal story before could have just been like a lot of, you, you know, like a, a classic story with like Caucasian, uh, protagonist speaking English, but uh, nowadays, like, I think globally you're seeing, like, people just, like, a good story is a good story, and it doesn't really, it doesn't matter what the, what the characters look like, who, who tell it, and there are, are a lot of universal themes that everyone can relate to, you know, like, in Squid Game, you know, class struggle, Poverty, you know. We got one more thing that I, I mean, I got two things that I want to ask before we wrap. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could open up a, a Miyazaki restaurant, what kind of food <laughs> would it have in it? What would be like your top three favorite uh, foods to feature in a? I'm pretty sure it exists somewhere. I might not be the only one with this great idea, but oh, I love yeah. Miyazaki films just for the food. It's amazing. Yeah, he's like the master of food porn. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yes, that's so hard. Uh, he has so much good food in his movie. Uh, definitely <laughs> the instant ramen from Ponyo. Yeah. That looks so good. Um, and uh, I really liked, even though the scene was like more of like a negative and scary scene, but in Spirited Away, when her parents are like pigging out on that buffet, <laughs> uh, like her dad's eating this like this looked, it looked like this big juicy soup dumpling uh, and it looked really good and but it was supposed to be horrifying and he's turning into a pig but i was like well that's really good i don't know if you're down for one more game um I was gonna draw, and I don't know if you have uh, access to any drawing tools right now. Probably. Uh, I'm in my office, but let me see if I can find. I was gonna say if we could draw each other's favorite foods. Like if you described your favorite food to me, I would draw it, and then I don't know. I would I would describe something and draw. Okay, we got we got like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. So this is like a, a quick gesture, uh, gesture drawing of, of food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, see, I could, I could still kind of draw, guys. I haven't quite hung up the, the, the pencil and paper yet. Okay, so I'll, I'll describe one of my favorite foods. I was at a, 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 a Lakers game, and they had this hot dog there that uh, it was like a hot dog that had a, 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 a pickle spear. Uh, there was onions and the weirdest ingredient, and I've never had it on a hot dog before. Mac, uh, it was a potato salad. Oh. Potato oh. salad. <laughs> now, did you potato want to just salad? Potato onions. salad, onions, a pickle spear on a on a hot dog. Is there a food that know. you like that that I could try drawing? Um, I really like chirashi bowls. 
So those bowls of like, it's like a bed of sushi rice with like a ton of delicious raw fish on top. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's like my favorite thing ever. Uh, so simple. I feel sad when I eat it because I'm like, oh no, like the, <laughs> the, the fish might become extinct at some point. Oh, but, no. but I'm just like savoring the food in it. It's just, it tastes so good. Is there is there like a lot of uh, smelt egg on top of that or? Oh yeah, there's a there's like you know like tuna, salmon, there's octopus, which I also feel guilty about because they're really smart. Uh, there's <laughs> oh, like an egg, like like the oh the yeah egg uh sashimi thing. There's and then sometimes if they want to get all decorative, they'll put like little carrot decorations in the shape of like a flower <laughs> like the hair. uh you know there's like shrimp there's like all kinds of man you're you're making me hungry you know I'm, I'm hungry. all right i'm done mine i could i could Whoa. reveal my uh, my bowl to you uh here it is Whoa, that looks great. Uh, I'm, you know. I'm just getting all caught up in like trying to draw a potato salad, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on, Um. You're, you're way better at describing something than I am, that's for sure. I'm, I just, it just doesn't even look like <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, a hot dog with potato salad on it? I mean, I was like, uh, I have to try this. And then uh, I was like, man, that's good. Okay, here's mine. Whoa! This is supposed to be a pickle spear. <laughs> These are uh, not stink lines. It's like piping. <laughs> if you could add some flies to that, that's perfect. That's exact. That's exactly how I ate it at, at the, the basketball game. Yeah, the basketball game. If you could please sign that and send it to me, I will frame that and hang it in my kitchen. Oh, yes. um, but thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Our guest has been Domi Shi, and I wish you all the best luck next year when Turning Red comes out in theaters. Thank you so much for, for being here. Thanks, Eric. It's fun. I'm hungry. Yeah, I know, right? When's lunch? <laughs> hey guys, Eric Bowser here, the host of Stay Tuned. If you like that video, be sure to check out these videos. Or they might be here. I don't know. I don't know where they're going to put them somewhere in this vicinity. Be sure to hit the subscribe button.